Welcome back to Med School Radio. This is Simon. I'm in New York City. If you're studying hard on this cold night, keep studying. You're going to be successful. You're listening to Med School Radio, bringing you the best in medicine. back to med school radio here we are in new york so we're going to be looking at uh, some more of the educational viewpoints the educational objectives that are given to us by some of the q banks so let's go ahead and start with diabetic ketoacidosis or dka remember this is characterized by polydipsia polyuria and a fruity odor to the breath and or urine. DKA is associated with elevated anion gap metabolic acidosis that is usually accompanied by compensatory respiratory alkalosis. This combination yields a low pH, low serum bicarbonate, and a low PaCO2. So those last three are all low low ph low serum bicarbonate and low pa co2 so that was dka next if you want to look at the kidney and how it's functioning you can look at pah the concentration of ph pah so remember that the concentrations of pah creatinine, inulin, and urea increase as fluids run along the proximal tubule, while the concentrations of bicarbonate, glucose, and amino acids decrease. So think about the nephron and what's happening in there, how it's working. So again, concentrations of PAH, creatinine, inulin, and urea increase as fluids run along the proximal tubule while concentrations of bicarbonate, glucose, and amino acids decrease. Bloom syndrome is a rare autosomal recessive condition caused by mutations in the BLM gene encoding helicase, an enzyme that unwinds the double helix during DNA replication. Patients typically present with growth retardation, facial anomalies, photosensitive skin rash, and immunodeficiency due to chromosomal instability and breakage. Okay, now a little bit of psychiatry. Oppositional defiant disorder is a behavioral disorder of childhood characterized by argumentative and defiant behavior toward authority figures. It does not involve the more severe violations of the basic rights of others seen in conduct disorder. So this is defiant behavior toward authority figures. Okay, so it's time for a little bit of molecular biology, our favorite. Yeah, right. Enhancers and silencers may be located upstream, downstream, or within a transcribed gene. These gene sequences function to increase and decrease the rate of transcription, respectively. In contrast, Promoter regions are typically located 25 or 75 bases upstream from their associated genes and function to initiate transcription. So we were talking about enhancers and silencers. Programmed death. 
receptor 1, or PD-1, is a checkpoint inhibitor that downgrades the cytotoxic T-cell response. Neoplastic cells often exploit this receptor via the overexpression of PD-1 ligand. PD-1 receptor inhibitors, for example, pembrolizumab, restore the T-cell response, allowing cytotoxic T-cells to invade the tumor and induce apoptosis of neoplastic cells. So again, PD-1 receptor inhibitors, for example, pembrolizumab, restore the T-cell response, allowing cytotoxic T-cells to invade the tumor and induce apoptosis of neoplastic cells. Inflammation is characterized by the passage of circulating inflammatory leukocytes into the inflamed tissue. The steps involved include margination, rolling, activation, tight adhesion, and crawling, and transmigration. What is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency? Glucose 6-dehydrogenase Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency causes hemolytic anemia and jaundice, secondary to increased oxidative stress due to the lack of NADPH. Glutathione reductase deficiency has a similar clinical consequence and as its absence results in the inability to utilize NADPH to reduce glutathione. Let's go over that again. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency causes hemolytic anemia and jaundice, secondary to increased oxidative stress due to the lack of NADPH. Glutathione reductase deficiency has a similar clinical consequence as its absence results in an inability to utilize NADPH to reduce glutathione. Okay. Inadequate canalization of ureto-pelvic junction, the ureto-pelvic junction, the connection site between the kidney and the ureter is the most common cause of unilateral fetal hydronephrosis. Inadequate canalization of the ureto pelvic junction. The connection site between the kidney and the ureter is the most common cause of unilateral fetal hydronephrosis. Okay. Let's change a little bit. Let's talk about some cranial nerves. The ocular motor nerve, or CN3, ophthalmic nerve, cranial nerve, VN branches, trochlear nerve, CN4, abducens nerve, CN6, and superior ophthalmic vein enter the orbit via the superior orbital fissure. Okay, think about the superior orbital fissure. What enters the oculomotor nerve, the ophthalmic nerve, V1 branches, trochlear nerve, which is for abducens nerve, six, and the superior ophthalmic vein enter the orbit via the superior orbital fissure. fissure. 
the suprachiasmic nucleus regulates circulation rhythms by processing light inflammation from the retina and modulating body temperature and the production of hormones, for example, cortisol and melatonin. Dyssynchrony between the local environment, for example, daylight hours, sleep schedules, and internal circadian rhythms can cause insomnia and daytime sleepiness, for example, jet lag. Melatonin supplementation is recommended for the treatment of insomnia associated with jet lag. So remember the suprachiasmatic nucleus regulates circadian rhythms. Gap junctions facilitate communication and coordination between cells and play an important role in labor contractions. Connexins are proteins that assemble into gap junctions and their density increases in the uterus before delivery in response to rising estrogen levels. So we're talking about gap junctions and connexins. One more time. Gap junctions facilitate communication and coordination between cells and play an important role in labor contractions. Connexins are proteins that assemble into gap junctions and their density increases in the uterus before delivery in response to rising estrogen levels. Phospholipids, including dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine, are a major component of pulmonary surfactants. Let's try to say that again. Phospholipids, including dipalmitoyl, dipalmitoyl, phosphatidylcholine, are a major component of pulmonary surfactant. The amniotic fluid lecithin, which is phosphatidyl, phosphatidylcholine, to sphingomyelin ratio, or the LS ratio, is measured in order to assess fetal lung maturity. The fetal lungs are considered mature when they are producing adequate surfactant to yield an LS ratio greater than two. The last line being very important. The fetal lungs are considered mature when they are producing adequate surfactant to yield an LS ratio greater than 2. In a normal bell-shaped distribution, 68% of all values are within one standard deviation from the mean. 95% of all values are within two standard deviations from the mean and 99.7% of all values are within three standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so that was a very good review. I'm gonna be trying to do some more of these because I think it's good to go over these educational points that are given by this cube bank. If you go over these, you're really going to be catching the main point from the questions. Memorize them, understand them, go over them, and tune in again to Med School Radio.